Hello, so today is October 31st, when I'm filming this at least, so happy belated Halloween. Today I'm doing my first ever wrap-up video talking about the books that I read in October. I may potentially also do a bit of a preview of books I might read in November, although I don't really know how other booktubers manage that. I'm always so impressed. I don't know what I'm going to feel like reading in the next month. But I read five books this month, so let's go ahead and talk about those. So the first book I read this month was The Black Dudley Murder by Marjorie Allingham. This is not the first of her books that I have read. I've read several of her other books, but this is actually the first book that she wrote. And so I was really interested and curious to see how it was. And I'm very sad to say that it showed that this is her first book. So in case you're not familiar with Marjorie Allingham, she wrote murder mystery novels in the early 20th century, uh, kind of in the vein of Agatha Christie. So this is a classic murder mystery. The characters are invited to a dinner party, and during the dinner party, one of them has the idea to play a game uh, involving kind of a hide-and-seek game uh, that involves a dagger, because nothing could go wrong with that. Lo and behold, someone is killed with the dagger, and the rest of the book is, is them trying to figure out who did it. The premise, which I won't get into much because of spoilers, but it was much different than a lot of other murder mysteries I had read, and at first I thought that was really interesting, but parts of this book were kind of slow, and the last third of the book just seemed utterly random to me, and it kind of went downhill from there, so unfortunately I only gave this 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. If you like murder mysteries, I would try Marjorie Allingham, but just maybe not this one. Maybe some of her later novels. Um, her detective, Albert Campion, is in this book still hilarious and delightful as he is in her other books, but he doesn't feature in it as much as I had hoped he would, so um, that was another part of the reason that it only got 3 out of 5 stars. So the second book I read this month was The Pelican Brief by John Grisham. This is the second book I've read by John Grisham. I read The Runaway Jury in the ninth grade, and I actually really liked it, and then proceeded to never read any of his other books. So The Pelican Brief is about a young woman named Darby Shaw, who is a law student, and she ends up finding herself in a conspiracy uh, regarding the death of two Supreme Court justices who she thinks she may have figured out who committed the murders and then she starts being uh, followed and things and things escalate from there. It was definitely a page-turner. I, I definitely was wanting to know what was going to happen next, especially near the end of the book. Was, I didn't dislike this book. I thought that it definitely had some good points to it. I really enjoyed how throughout the book he kind of lays down this puzzle and you can see the pieces and then at the end he puts all the puzzle pieces together. I thought that was done well, um, but there were a few things about this book that I wasn't a huge fan of. I, I don't know if it's because I kept putting the book down for a couple days, but I kept forgetting the characters' names. Like, I, there were just, it felt like there were too many characters. I could not keep them all straight. There was a romance or two in this novel, and I just really wasn't convinced of the necessity of it. I thought that this book could have been just fine without a romance, and I don't really feel like it added that much, if anything, to the plot or the characters. So overall, even though I did somewhat enjoy this book, I gave it three out of five stars. I was a little bit disappointed. I really enjoyed the Runaway Jury, although that may possibly have been because I read it in the ninth grade. I'm really curious to see if I read The Runaway Jury now if I would enjoy it as much as I did however many years ago. The third book that I read this month was The Big Over Easy by Jasper Ford, and I am so excited to talk about this book. I do not know how it took me so long to stumble across the name Jasper Ford. So Jasper Ford is a writer who I don't even know. I read the first book in his other series, uh, Thursday Next. First, that book is called The Air Affair, Air as a Jane Eyre, and it involves time travel and, and literary references and puns. He likes puns a lot, and I will never complain about puns. Puns are the best. 
but I was like, how have I not already run across this book? I really enjoyed it, and then I found out that he had another series called the Nursery Crime series. Get it? Nursery Crime? I told you, he likes puns. So this is the first series, the first book in the Nursery Crime series called The Big Over Easy. And as you might guess from the cover of the book, this is a book about the murder of Humpty Dumpty. The detectives in the book are Jack Spratt and Mary Mary, as in Mary Mary Quite Contrary. If you have ever read a murder mystery, whether or not you enjoyed it, you will enjoy this book because, but especially if you are a big murder mystery fan like I am. This book makes so much fun in a, in, you know, uh, a well-meaning way of all of the tropes in murder mysteries, like red herrings and the criminal being left-handed and the butler did it. And there's clever references to Sherlock Holmes and Hercule Poirot and Miss Marple. And it just makes me so happy. So, this book, if you like murder mysteries, if you like satire, if you like parody, if you like Douglas Adams or Terry Pratchett, this is a murder mystery version of Douglas Adams or Terry Pratchett. There is no limit to this man's imagination. So overall, I just really, really enjoyed this book. It's just so delightful and fun. The back of the book has a diagram, like an autopsy figure of Humpty Dumpty. So yeah, The Big Over Easy. As you may imagine, I gave this 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. So the fourth book that I read this month was The Great Train Robbery by Michael Crichton. And if you want to hear more of my thoughts on this, I talked about it in my video on the Dewey's 24-hour readathon because this was the only book that I read all of during the readathon. Long story short, I did enjoy it. It wasn't my favorite book ever or anything. I think I gave it four out of five stars. If you want to hear more about this book, it is in the description and you should check it out. And the fifth and final book that I read this month was Mystery Mile, also by Marjorie Allingham. And this is the second book that she wrote. And I was really disappointed to find out that it also was not as good as her later works. Um, it was better than The Black Dudley Murder, I think, but I still wasn't terribly impressed by it. I gave it three out of five stars also. This book follows an American family where the father, who is, they never really say, I think he's in his 50s or 60s, and he is being kind of targeted by uh, some kind of mob mafia group in the US and uh, because they think he knows something and so it seems like all the people around him keep dying except for him and so he's traveling to England to try and escape it and Albert Campion the main detective in, in Marjorie Allingham's novels comes across him and tries to protect him and figure out what's going on and get to the bottom of this to try and, and make sure that no one else around him dies. So it was an interesting book. Um, the first half of the book I thought was really well done, but I wasn't impressed with the resolution of the book. The same thing happened with the Black Dudley murder. I just felt like the resolution just kind of, like, she didn't know where else to go or something. But I did give it three out of five stars. Albert Campion is always hilarious. He's if you've never read a Marjorie Allingham book, you should you should pick up one of the later ones because they really are fun when she gets it right. So yeah, so those were the five books that I read this month. So I don't really know what I'm going to be reading in November. Like I said, I feel like, I don't know, I might surprise myself. Right now, I can pretty much guarantee that I will probably read a Jasper Ford book. I don't know if it'll be the sequel to this one or the sequel to the first Thursday next book but it'll be one of those. I've been wanting to read, I have a few science fiction books, so I might read one of those. I've, I've, I've been reading a lot of mysteries, which I love mysteries, but I kind of like to mix it up. So maybe I'll read some science fiction, and uh, I also have some nonfiction history books that I've been wanting to read. So I know that sounds dreadfully boring, but I swear I'll make it sound cool. If you liked this video, feel free to subscribe to my channel, and Tell me about what books you read in the comments or if you've read any of these books and really enjoyed them. So that's all I have for today. So uh, have a great day. Bye.